Hello my sock universe, I'm back with making review videos. Let me know how you liked the montages last week. I just thought I need to get this in. There was no way that I'm gonna do a proper video to be honest. Because I <laughs> barely could sit in many ways. But yeah, um, this week we gotta talk about what happened. Uh, it was a weird, weird week for me. Uh, in Germany as well as in, especially in Austria, uh, was not really... Um, how to say, I was not really up for it. Uh, very briefly, I have to say from the previous, I thought that the Frankfurt game against Bayern, that was a really great game with two different halves. I just wanted to get that in because I think this got a little bit lost. Um, and also the Schalke loses to Dortmund 0-4. This is the perfect result if you're a Dortmund fan uh, because Schalke 0-4, 0-4 is the name which is big sign of mockery there by the way last thing um also from last week try to find it on youtube admira against lask the second goal for lask is amazing because the, it's a controversial but the goal scorer also assisted himself that's you have to see uh i don't want to say much more it's an amazing goal but yeah, let's get back into the uh, current round. And I don't know what the headlines are that Frankfurt, uh, after the big win, managed to lose somehow. And uh, Bayern and Dortmund, ahead of the big clash, get the wins. Wolfsburg keeps winning. And I think most importantly, Leipzig somehow manages to stay in the title race. They were out of it. They many managed to stay. In Austria, I think it's all about that the... Uh, the race for the last playoff spot is heating up considerably. At the same time, both Lusk and Salzburg have been losing, which, yeah, did not, uh, kind of, yeah, for Lusk, definitely a bad result. Let's get into it. Um, I actually saw uh, Bremen against Frankfurt, and I have to say this was a game that Frankfurt started out, as you would expect from them, uh, dominant, self-assured, and they get the goal through Andre Silva, who did not play against Bayern, uh, handing it in from almost an impossible position in ninth minute. And you see, and, and, and you think, yeah, this is going your the clearly Frankfurt's way. But slowly, 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 Bremen uh, clawed themselves back, and they were really trying to hit Frankfurt on a, with fast counter breaks. A little bit of Frankfurt style, I have to say. Uh, they hit the bar at half before halftime. But um, nothing came from it. Um, but right after the half, they come out and score. Um, at this moment, I still thought, yeah, a little bit against the run of play. But uh, from what followed, this was exactly a sign uh, Bremen is going to get this win. The goal was rumored to be offside. I They drew through the lines. I would have actually th thought that this goal was a, a bit more on the offside than non-offside, but you know, VAR, maybe they know a little bit more than me. Same thing goes for the sec second goal for Bremen. A another counter-attack where Eggestein, brother of Lask Striker, uh, current Lask Striker, still Bremen player, uh, plays it into Sargent. I was sure that Sargent is offside. No, he was actually clearly not offside and it's 2-1 for Bremen and Frankfurt cannot find a way back. Uh, actually, Bremen then had a goal disallowed for offside, uh, which, which would have made uh, things even worse. But this was a very well-deserved and big win for Bremen and for Frankfurt. You just thought, ooh, Champions League in Frankfurt and yeah, it's kind of a, this big defla de deflation going on. But maybe it's the right uh, loss at the right time because, you know, after winning against Bayern, you're flying high. You gotta take it seriously, and maybe um, Coach Hütter will take it there. Uh, Bayern against Köln, first half was all Bayern. Uh, even Chupo Moting scoring, Lewandowski making it 2 0. There was nothing coming from Köln. But right off the hatch, Giri makes it 2 1, and there was a little period where Bayern was a little bit shaky. Maybe it could have been even 2 2, but then Thomas Müller comes on within 70 seconds, assist Lewandowski for the third. I think uh, Kern had then another chance to put a uh, goal, goal, goal in it, but very late on Gnabry adds two more to a score that was maybe a little bit too high for that game. Um, and Bayern still has some worries that in the middle of the game, they were not all that great. So um, 
but you know they get the result uh and uh in the interest but they score goals like crazy but they also have the worst defensive uh statistics at the moment seen in 29 years or some, something like like then that was a horrible season for Bayern so rather remarkable Dortmund um yeah to get a clear domination of Bielefeld by the way Dortmund Bielefeld is the fixture with the highest scoreline in the Bundesliga 11-1 in I think 1982 they said that before so I want to pass this on took Dortmund a while um, they had chances right from the get-go uh, didn't score then you know hanging in the hang handy but right after they have the uh, the hood after a really nice Sancho assist makes it 1-0 and Sancho was basically the main player for Dortmund there um, they uh, get a penalty uh, where Sancho steps up and and takes it uh, Holland kind of passing it on and then I have to also you also have to give um, lots of credit to Holland he is in a situation where he could score his goal but he passes it off to Renier for his goal and this I think showed me uh, this is one of the things where I start thinking yeah this Holland guy is actually a really really good striker he's not I mean he's goals for goal but he's not so selfish that he wouldn't pass up a better um, an opponent and Dortmund 3-0 with the Frankfurt loss, there's a chance that they actually might get back into the Champions League, but we'll see. They have a big game coming up. Stuttgart, I'm wearing Stuttgart today uh, because of that big, big result. But Schalke was just abysmal on the, on, on, on the back. The first two goals, almost carbon copies, where they both forget about Endo. Uh, in both the, the, the whole Schalke defense forgets about Endo. Uh, Kalajic makes it 3-1. Kolasnaj puts one back, but then uh, they, I think they had a... Did they have a penalty? I think they had a, pay, yeah, a penalty miss too through Bentaleb that could have put them back into the game. Uh, but then later on, Clement and Didavi make it a uh, resounding 5 1 score. And I think it was every bit of 5 1. Uh, huge trouble at Schalke. I mean, they're going down. There is a revolt of the, of the seemingly of, of, of the players against the coach. Ugh. It's ugly. It's ugly. And if you're a Schalke fan, and I have sympathies for Schalke too, to be honest. Uh, it's dire and dour. Wolfsburg, Hertha was playing, Wolfsburg was, was scoring. And I mean, this was a Hertha performance. They play well, they did it already last week, but they don't score. And then they score an own goal. Um, yes, he wanted to save it and probably the goal was going on. And uh, Wolf, what was with, without not playing well, gets another win. Wolfsburg, very, very serious contender up there. And then the big game, uh, and I only saw highlights between Leipzig and Gladbach. That was a game uh, where we thought that just when you thought Leipzig is back in a tie title race, they're out, out of the game. Because at the half, Gladbach was 2 0 up. Admittedly lucky, but they got an early penalty and then they scored a goal through Tioram in the 19th. And Leipzig had a really, really hard time with getting that game um, going. Then in the 50th, you think that Sirloth got Leipzig back in, in the game, but it was a handball in the build up, so a uh, goal didn't count. And Another letter for Gladbach, you know, they also are in trouble with Rose going to Dortmund and blah, 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 no champion and champions are well, the results are on, on, on the piling up. It looks a little bit dire, but it seemed like they they could get some, something at Leipzig. But Nkunku, after Sorloff assist, makes a goal, then Paulsen gets the equalizer in the 66th, and there was a lot of time. But just when you knew, thought Gladbach will hang on, Sorloff gets his goal, and I have to, have to say, uh, he probably was hired on his great performances on the, uh, in, the champ uh, um, in the Nations League, not Champions League, where he was in good har har harmony with Holland. He was actually a little bit of a bust, but I think he's coming back in. He's a hard working striker. 3 2. Very, very good. Of the Sunday games, I think the outstanding result is that Freiburg beats Leverkusen, and Leverkusen, another team in free fall. So if we look here now at the standings, uh, we have still a title race, although it is fairly tilted into Bayern's favor. Um, but Leipzig is welcoming Bayern at the beginning of next month. So that could be a big one. If they could all hold surf, that might go a big way. And Bayern has maybe a tricky game, but you know, they play Dortmund uh, next week. We can throw at home. This was never really 
uh, contest. Wolfsburg, now clear of Frankfurt and Frankfurt, three points ahead, ahead, ahead of Dortmund. Um, Wolfsburg really looks strong at the moment to go into the Champions League. Uh, former last coach Glasner uh, doing an outstanding job there. Not spectacular, but getting the job done. On the bottom, I, despite Köln and Hertha losing, uh, with Bielefeld also losing, I mean, it's still very, very tight uh, down there. But yeah, uh, Schalke is down, Mainz mm, not really picking up points either. Augsburg got themselves out of trouble for sure and Bremen as, as well. So I think starting Köln, that's the relegation zone. Um, and if you look at the expected standings, yeah, Mainz will get in the rele relegation spot. Hertha still favored to go all, all out of it. I mean, they are performing well, but they need to get the goals in. Hertha is really, really in trouble. Uh, there's a lot of uh, shifting around in midfield, but I think neither of these sides will actually really challenge for Europe. Uh, in the midweek, we have the German Cup. I actually have to say that uh, Leipzig against Wolfsburg is probably the big uh, matchup. Gladbach, Dortmund, that's a dicey one because Rosa is moving to Dortmund at the end of the season. So I think both of those are a rather in interesting one. I may watch one of these. And then on the weekend, yeah, it's all Bayern Dortmund. Um, Frankfurt Stuttgart is interesting because I think Frankfurt needs to bounce back, but Stuttgart is a very, rather impossible opponent there. Wolfsburg against Hoffenheim, yeah, and who is Leipzig playing? Freiburg. All not that easy, easy, easy games. Schalke, Mainz. No, I don't want to saw less chance. Schalke is going down. So, moving to Austria, where in the midweek we had a huge win for Hartberg at, against Tirol. This is for, for, for the playoff race. Uh, where Tirol actually had many good chances, but Hartberg scored the one goal uh, in the 68th minute uh, for a really, really, really lucky win. But what that did for them is this was the game in hand that they had, and they suddenly moved in seventh uh, position, only two points behind Tirol. So, uh, with or four games left to play. This actually put Hartberg in a really good position to again qualify for the top six. And Hartberg is a really, really small town team that was when, when they got promoted, everyone said they're gonna go down again. And now uh, third season, and they're actually doing really, really, really well. Uh, Coach Job doing an outstanding job actually there. Uh, the question is, will it translate to a bigger team, which I am a little bit doubtful. So yeah, uh, if you look at this table here now, it was Tirol, Hartberg, Austria, maybe St. Pölten that could go uh, for, it, for for this top six spot. And then the weekend happened and Tirol only manages a 1-1 one -one at Admira, Al which was probably fair. Tirol is going a little bit down and Hartberg gets the big win at Lask. And yeah, Lask fan talking here. You see a lot of black churches, meaning Lask is losing. I don't wanna. This is a. I mean, it it uh, lost that hurt because the you were one nil up after four minutes, and then with two complete defensive blunders, you throw the game away in the twenty third and twenty sixth, and then a uh, hardback is standing deep, defending really well. Lask trying to find solutions, but not really able to do so. But I think the more damning thing is that Lask has, I think, eight players out injured, and then some of them are key players. I mean, that game, we had two key players uh, suspended, and then uh, on, on the attack, we are really, really spread thin at, at, at the moment with a lot of crucial ligament injuries, and it doesn't get much better because... Um, you have to play now those players. If you play them a lot, they will injure themselves a lot. So um, it's it's a downward spiral in, in a way. And I don't think it has much to do, uh, that much to do with the coach. It's just an unlucky season because I think overall the setup for Lask is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, it just, this, this season is all not going our way. It hurts also a little bit, a bit, bit more that Rapid gets a last minute win at Ried. Austria with a pretty big win at St. Pölten, uh, getting St. Pölten kind of out of the race and Austria win staying in the race. Um, Alltag winning with a new coach at Wolfsburg is also a big result. Uh, and given that there's a cup game, which is in this involved, Wolfsburg last game, I was also happy to see them lose. And then the big surprise, Sturm Graz, who had to play in Klagenfurt because the pitch in Graz is so horrible actually win against Salzburg. 2-0 uh, up after 22 minutes and Salzburg only can put one back uh, through a penalty very late on. They also will play in the cup, same uh, low location soon. Of course, Salzburg coming back from um, the 
uh, from from playing the Euro Europa League losing, so there was definitely an advantage for Sturm there. So with all these uh, surprising results, not much changed, but a lot of changed in the percentages. You see now that uh, I mean. Championship was always going for Salsa. So, Salsa so, so, is now dropping again behind Rapid. Um, but for moving into the final playoff spot, you see Hartberg now is actually favored in there. Wolfsburg is also not quite safe. And Austria Wien, who is probably the biggest uh, name in there, still has a fighting chance. I mean, they are not too far off. However, they don't have that easy of a program. Um, if you look at the expected final regular season standings, uh, Hartberg is the one that should go in, but you see kind of this big blob there around the line where two go in, two go out, um, and St. Burton is clearly out of it. So it's a four-way race, although I think that Wolfsburg has the quality to stay in there. Um, as for the expected final standings, yes, Rapid goes ahead of Lusk again. Um, if this month and maybe get a f one or two players, although I don't really think it 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 it, it will be hard with the in with the injuries. Um, I honestly, honestly, I think that Lusk will again finish fourth, which is a shame because squad wise and play style wise and result wise, when they're when they're firing, they're clearly the second best team in Austria. But I think. Um, it will be tough to challenge for another Champions League spot. As I said, in the midweek we have cup uh, games, Wolfsburg against Lusk, a huge one. And fortunately, Lusk has been playing quite nicely away from home, especially in Wolfsburg. So I'm quite happy about that. And if Sturm could do another solid uh, against Salzburg, that would be my favorite. But I actually think that Salzburg will move on and Wolfsburg Lusk will go. Will be a tight, tight game. And on the weekend, um, I mean, the big one is the Viennese story between Austria and Rapid. That's always a big one. Other than that, Lask has an away game at Altach, which I'm not too unhappy about. Hardback against Al Almira, if you go Tirol against Sturm. Sturm will probably be also a little bit reeling from the cup game, I would say. Um, and St. Burton, Salzburg. So, I mean, you know. There could not be much movement, there could be a lot of movement. If one of those teams that want to go in the playoff spot, want to get a win, there is, it's not likely, uh, but for Hartberg it's very likely, likely to, to do something at home against Admira. So uh, that's why Hart Hartberg will be in a good position and yeah, I don't think that Austria will win against Rapid. So that's it from me for the German-speaking countries that I'm looking at. Uh, let, let me know what you thought about uh, Bundesliga and Austrian Bundesliga. Give me a In any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.